Hi, this is Julie Venners with another Lupus Foundation of America research update. It is estimated that as many as 40% of all people with lupus and as many as two-thirds of all children with lupus will develop kidney complications. Kidney involvement is a serious complication of lupus, so it's no surprise that a number of studies presented recently during the American College of Rheumatology annual scientific meeting in Philadelphia were about lupus nephritis. Doctors need to quickly diagnose and closely monitor patients to prevent tissue damage from lupus kidney disease. Often that requires a kidney biopsy, which can be an invasive and risky procedure. Two studies presented during the ACR meeting suggest that alternatives may soon be available. Dr. Carolina landolt Marta Carino of Toronto Western Hospital reported on her study to find urinary biomarkers, molecules in the urine, which might tell doctors what's going on in the kidney. We recruited patients who were undergoing renal biopsy as part of their normal lupus care and then measured certain inflammatory molecules in the plasma, so that's in the blood, and in the urine at the time of the biopsy. And then we said, does looking at the urine correlate with what's going on in the kidney by the renal biopsy? Does it tell us, does it give us a hint? And what we found is particularly with patients who have what we call proliferative nephritis, which is uh, a fairly aggressive form of lupus nephritis, is that there's a fairly good correlation between what is going in the urine and this kind of inflammatory signature in the urine and what's going on in the kidney. Additional studies are needed before these biomarkers can be validated and used in clinical practice. However, Dr. Landolt is hopeful that this process can save people the need for repeat evasive testing or unnecessary treatment. A similar study was conducted in pediatric lupus patients to look for markers of different classes of lupus nephritis. Dr. Lena Das, a fellow at the Cincinnati Children's Hospital, presented the data. So the idea with our study is that we would look at proteins that are uh, expressed in the kidneys of patients who have these different classes of lupus nephritis and we would uh, see if any proteins could um, be significantly different between these uh, two classes um, and be potentially uh, used as a biomarker in the future in place of the renal biopsy. We have um, a study which uh, enrolled patients who had active kidney disease at the time of biopsy and um, we uh, collected their urine for a number of months, uh, went on for about 18 months um, and we uh, froze the urine um, and so we still have samples of this and so what we did was we looked back at the biopsies and we got the frozen urine and we measured the protein in the urine with a number of different um, protein measuring techniques. Um, and so it's a screening tool, very basic at the moment, um, and we need to do more precise measurements in order to be able to take it to the clinic where it could be used for um, patient care. The next step for this research would be to identify the specific proteins associated with different classes of lupus nephritis and then to do validating studies in larger numbers of patients using more precise measurements. Children with lupus have more kidney involvement than adult lupus patients and it can be more serious in children as well. One form of pediatric lupus nephritis can be particularly challenging to study because there are fewer cases. Dr. Boris Hughley is with the Hospital for Sick Children in Toronto, Canada, which conducted a study of pediatric patients with membranous lupus nephritis. Membranous lupus nephritis is a class 5 kidney disease where patients experience extreme swelling and protein loss, and the results were encouraging. We know the treatment protocols for proliferative nephritis. There has been a lot of studies going on, and they have the numbers of patients. While we have very few information on membranous nephritis, and we have even fewer information on membranous nephritis in children. So um, the significance is, or our message is, that patients with membranous nephritis, at least in childhood, don't require that much aggressive treatment, which has been, in adults, has been controversially discussed. However, our study showed that 90% of the patients do very well. They require little treatment, and, um, but there is a solid core of patients, um, who, about 10% of patients, who do badly. 
Dr. Hughley said in the future he hopes to conduct randomized controlled trials on children with membranous nephritis, but that finding a sufficient number of study participants could be challenging because of the limited number of cases. Next up, another major complication of lupus, cardiovascular disease. According to Dr. Michelle Petrie, director of the Lupus Center at Johns Hopkins Medical Institute in Baltimore, a young woman with lupus between the ages of 35 and 44 has a 50-fold increased risk of having a heart attack. Heart disease is now a leading cause of death among people with lupus, but Dr. Petrie says researchers are beginning to learn why people with lupus have a higher risk for cardiovascular disease and how doctors may be able to lessen that risk. In recent work that's been done with Dr. Kiani and one of our radiologists here at Hopkins, we've discovered that the very earliest phase of atherosclerosis is an atherosclerotic plaque that is soft. That means it doesn't have any calcium in it. This very first kind of atherosclerotic plaque is associated with lupus disease activity. So we think we finally have the tie-in to active lupus. Currently, we have a trial of omega-3 underway because of interesting data that came from the United Kingdom that per perhaps omega-3 might be one way to help early atherosclerotic disease in lupus. Dr. Naveed Sitar, professor of metabolic medicine at the University of Glasgow in the United Kingdom, moderated a session at the ACR conference on cardiovascular risks associated with rheumatic diseases, including lupus. He talked with us about the risk factors and what patients themselves can do about them. Once patients have rheumatic diseases, generally they tend to have lower levels of physical activity um, and other factors, specifically in terms of drug treatments for rheumatic disease, some of them may have adverse effects on the vasculature. So it's a whole host of reasons um, which combine to enhance risk in cardiovascular disease. Those individuals sh should see themselves as individuals who should be monitored for cardiovascular risk factors more, uh, as, at least as aggressively as the general population, perhaps more so, in the sense that they should have their blood lipids checked, they should have their blood pressure checked, they should try to pay more attention to their smoking and try and stop smoking if they possibly can. Several studies presented at the ACR meeting looked at ways to manage and treat lupus-related cardiovascular disease. Dr. Rachel Davis, a consultant rheumatologist with the Louise Coote Lupus Unit at St. Thomas Hospital in London, led a study involving patients with mild lupus who had skin and joint involvement and who were taking Plaquenil to see whether at that early stage in their disease their arteries had been affected, and, if so, whether treatment with mycophonolate mofetel could improve their artery function. And in the 70 patients that we looked at with mild lupus, all their arteries functioned very well. There was no evidence of early atherosclerosis. And mycophenolate mofetel didn't improve their arterial function. So we really felt this was a positive uh, study from the point of view of patients with mild lupus, that their arteries were functioning well. And provided they were not smoking, had good blood pressure control, were not overweight, did not have a raised cholesterol, then the, the fact that they had lupus did not put them at an increased risk of a heart attack or stroke in the future. You can learn more about how lupus affects the kidneys and heart from the Lupus Foundation of America website at www.lupus.org. Click on the link for the About Lupus section. You'll also want to visit the community section of our website and check out transcripts from our live chats with lupus experts on these topics as well. Thanks for watching this Lupus Research Update.